what they've done, in effect, is pivot their attack through poorly defended sites into a poorly defended cloud venture into a thoroughly defended industrial site, our site, the water treatment site. Hello and welcome to Waterfalls Industrial Security Institute. I'm Andrew Ginter with Waterfall Security Solutions, and today we are working our way through the top 20 cyber attacks on industrial control systems. We are using the top 20 attacks as a ruler, as a way of comparing the strength of two different security programs for a hypothetical water treatment plant. One security program is Vintage 2013 with a lot of software best practices like intrusion detection, security updates, and antivirus and encryption. And the other security posture is that same 2013 Vintage best practice posture with one addition, which is a unidirectional security gateway positioned at the ITOT interface as the sole connection, the only connection between the industrial network and the IT network. Today's attack scenario is an IIoT pivot. What is that? Here's how it goes. We have hacktivists, okay? These are people without a lot of money, but with some skill that for some reason have decided they don't like the water treatment plant. So what do they do about that? They look around, they read press releases, they find vendors who have announced that the water treatment plant has bought their stuff. They look at the water treatment plant's announcements and see that they have upgraded their control system with brand new industrial Internet of Things technology. What is the industrial Internet of Things? In this example, it's a bunch of edge devices. These are computers in the control network that connect out to the cloud, to the vendor's cloud website, and interact with the cloud directly, sending data for analysis, receiving optimization instructions, whatever. There's lots of different applications for this new class of industrial Internet of Things technology. What do the hackers do about this? The hacktivists, they look around, they continue searching press, press releases, and they find several vendors who have deployed their brand new industrial Internet of Things stuff at the target water treatment site. They search those vendors' press releases and they find other announcements for lots of other sites some of which are large and presumably well defended, some of which are very small and may not be so well defended. They target the smaller sites that are customers of some of the same industrial internet vendors as their real target. They target those smaller sites and they find one or two of them that really are poorly defended and they break in very easily. What do they do when they're inside? They find the industrial internet technology. They look hard at the technology remotely through the compromised industrial control systems, and they discover that one of the vendors is using an old version of Linux on their technology. They haven't been updating it diligently. You know, they've been sloppy about their security. They break into that device at the poorly defended small site. They download public attack tools like Metasploit. This is a demonstration attack tool. They download it to the Linux system on the industrial internet device. Okay, this is not being downloaded to a, a, a Windows system that's got antivirus installed. And on the Linux system, they point that technology at the connection to the database in the cloud that the device is talking to across the internet in the, in the vendor's cloud instance. They discover, sure enough, that the vendor's been just as sloppy in the cloud as they've been in the device, and the, the database, the version of the database that's running, has lots of known vulnerabilities. They tell Metasploit, take advantage of one of the known vulnerabilities, drop a remote control component, Metasploit comes with this stuff, into that computer, and now they have remote control of a computer in the vendor's cloud. They look around in the cloud, and sure enough, they find connections to dozens of the vendor's customers, including our hypothetical water treatment plant. And now they discover they can download new firmware to the edge devices in the water treatment plant. They can, you know, they discover a feature where they can even tell 
the equipment in the water treatment plant to execute arbitrary Linux commands. This is a support feature. It helps the vendor uh, you know, debug and keep their equipment running because it is brand new. The industrial internet is brand new and they're still debugging some of this stuff and they don't necessarily want the customer to see that they're debugging it. And so they can do all this stuff quietly you know, inside of the, the, the connection to the cloud without telling the customer that they're fixing problems the customer hasn't noticed yet. Isn't this clever? Well, the bad guys, of course, use this facility to run bad commands inside the uh, edge devices in their target, which is the thoroughly defended water treatment plant. What do they do? They attack other devices on the control network of the water treatment plant. These industrial internet edge devices have been deployed on the control network for the water treatment plant. They can, you know, launch denial of service attacks on this equipment. They can, you know, try and steal credentials by looking at network packets. They can try and guess credentials if, if there's default passwords being used. They can steal some ransomware. It's not hard to find other people's ransomware on the internet, drop that in and say, ha ha ha, we're not making money off this, but you just had your hard drive encrypted and you've crippled the water treatment plant. So this is an attack where the, the hacktivists have a degree of technical sophistication. They kind of know what they're doing. They don't have the resources to build their own custom attack tools. They tend to download attack tools from the internet. But what they've done, in effect, is pivot their attack through poorly defended sites into a poorly defended cloud venture into a thoroughly defended industrial site, our site, the water treatment site. In terms of consequences, um, the consequences are probably going to be on the sort of the, the mild to medium side. The consequences might be outages for the control system. Um, they might be, you know, erased hard drives. They, they might trigger an emergency shutdown of certain subsystems or the entire water treatment system. Whenever you have an emergency shutdown, there's a chance of equipment damage. Generally, you can shut things down very fast at risk of damaging the equipment, bringing it up is a much slower process. So there's a chance of equipment damage, but you're almost certainly going to trigger a, uh, a shutdown and possibly a boil water advisory until they figure out what's going on and, and clean the malware out of the system. How do our two security postures stand up to this class of attack? Well, the 2013 posture um, might detect the attack in progress once the bad guys are into the water treatment system. Once they're into the edge devices and they start looking around and doing stuff, um, the question is how quickly can the bad guys bring about their consequences once their activity is detected? Because these are not experts. They're not, um, you know, the world's best intruders. Um, they might be detected. Um, again, one way to reduce the chance of being detected is to launch some other attack on the same target, let's say on the IT network, a, dis a distributed denial of service or a whole bunch of spam, to distract the incident response teams into looking at what appears to be a high priority crisis on the IT network and neglect what appear to be low priority alarms on the, the OT network for a period of time. So. They might get detected, they might not, they might be able to bring about consequences before the incident response team can shut them down, they might not. Their communications is unlikely to be detected because it's encrypted all the way out to the internet. But once they start doing stuff, who knows? The point is, the 2013 vintage system does not reliably defeat this class of attack. It might, it might not. That does not mean reliable, that means unreliable. This class of system does not reliably defeat a hacktivist class attack pivoting through an industrial internet cloud. On the unidirectionally protected network, of course, nothing from the cloud can get back into the industrial network. The edge devices can report to the unidirectional gateway, can be replicated out so that the replicas can report to the cloud. The cloud can have access to all the big data analytics they want to do, but nothing gets back in. This is the point. So even if the attackers pivot through a poorly defended third party, pivot into a poorly defended cloud vendor, there's no way for that cloud vendor to send attack information through the one-way device into the edge devices in the industrial network. So the unidirectionally protected security program does reliably defeat this industrial internet pivoting attack. So let's have a look at our scorecard again. How are we doing with these two security postures? 
the line in the scorecard is the cyber design basis threat line. It's the line between the attacks that we defeat reliably below the line and the attacks that we do not defeat, defeat reliably above the line. As you can see, uh, there's very few attacks the unidirectional posture has not reliably defeated. There's very few attacks that the software-based posture does reliably, 100% of the time, defeat. As you can see, there's a significant difference here. The unidirectionally protected uh, security posture is substantially stronger at defeating these attacks completely reliably than the classic software-based you know, 2013 vintage security posture. Thank you for joining us at the Industrial Security Institute. Uh, a reminder that if you want to download the Top 20 Attacks white paper, there should be a link right below the video here. And hey, you know, you, you watch to the end of the video here. Give us a like and subscribe, would you please? Thanks again. We'll catch you next time.